What, what grabs you, Grant? Purdy's back injury that we didn't know about or Hargrave's torn triceps that takes him out for the year? Let's take it one at a time. Let's start with Hargrave. So last night, we see that clip of him sort of loafing on the field. I think right. in retrospect, it's I, it's fair to assume or, or wonder at least, was he playing through the, the torn tricep at that point? In, in which case, got to let him off the hook. I mean, he was playing through a torn tricep. Yeah. Uh, but what I do want to say is after the game, Kyle talks about it and says, well, tricep injury for Hargrave, but doctors looked at it and they're thinking it's a contusion. Come out today. It's torn out for the year. Ooh, okay. So it's like, it has been this pattern of injury happens and Kyle's like, mm, it's a calf strain with Christian McCaffrey. Actually, it's an Achilles uh, tendonitis and he may not play for a while with, with Kittle. It's uh cramps. Ooh, actually, it's a hamstring injury, and he's going to miss a game. Like, there's been example after example of misreporting or underreporting an injury, and then there's like this shocking, like, oh, it's worse than we thought. Which brings us to Brock Purdy. Kyle just casually says, "Oh, and Brock's day to day with back soreness," and that's like, oh, that's nothing. Yeah, why would you even tell us? I mean, my back is sore. I wake up with a sore back all the time, and he's like, oh yeah. So the the, the results of the MRI were good, and it's like. He had an MRI on his back? What? You didn't talk about that after the game. What's going on with Brock? So, I mean, it sounds like it's nothing serious, but I thought Hargrave's thing was nothing serious. I thought Christian McCaffrey's thing was nothing serious. So, we got to wait and see with Brock. His back hurts very bad. I mean, and, and you know, it, it, the escalation of these injuries are always, it's always them downplaying it. Like, ah, you know what? He just, if you just get some of grandma's chicken soup, he'll be fine. Actually, you know what? The guy's got uh, pneumonia and he's near death. <laughs> you know, what I'm it's saying? a strain. It's just, it's sore. It's, it's like they always say it and it's not really an injury. Like, well, if you had an MRI, then is it more than sore? Like, is there something that you're not exactly disclosing? I mean, what's going to happen Wednesday? You know what? Uh, actually, it's a gangrene infection and he's, uh, he's going to die. Actually, he has um, a cracked vertebrae. Like, what, 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 what? what? Now, they did say the results of the MRI are okay, so I wouldn't expect anything like that. But if if his back hurt, hurt that much that he had to get an MRI, I'm thinking it's really stiff today. We took a lot of hits. I mean, if you watched, Brock Purdy ran for his life in this game. He ran effectively, but he took hits. And, not, and the camera didn't always catch him. There were a couple plays. That I'm, I'm watching the TV copy. There's a couple plays where... The ball was thrown downfield, and you can see the Niners on the sideline, Grant, like going, like pointing at, like, hey, they took a cheap shot on the quarterback late. And um, I don't know if they, the, all of those got called, uh, but I think it was a very physical game for Brock for sure. I'm not surprised at all. I, I thought there was a chance that he was not, was going to be, he was going to be on the injured list after yesterday because he just took a lot of hits. A lot. There was a lot of guys that, that put hands on him as he was running around out there. He, he took, that he he dove for that first down. That was an athletic play. Maybe something happened there. And also he had two quarterback sneaks. And you know, I feel like there's a lot of heads and necks and banging on that play. I noticed that in those situations, the Rams never ask Matthew Stafford to do a quarterback sneak. So we've seen quarterbacks get concussions on that play. I wonder if you could get a sore back from a quarterback sneak or two. I don't know. But let's talk about we don't really know what's going on with Brock. Something to monitor. With Hargrave, he's done for the year, $21 million a year, uh, done. And it's not like, I mean, the Hargrave era with the Niners wasn't great. He might be done as, as a 49er. His contract's going to get very expensive next year, and he, he really hasn't lived up to his contract. He's he's probably the guy that would they would go to as a cap casualty to try to make everything work. I, I you know, who knows, because they don't have backups there. But But, you know, one more thing on Brock, on one of those quarterback sneaks, there was one of them where he did get his helmet kind of twisted. And when he stood up, he kind of like re kind of twisted his helmet. And you kind of want, I wonder if he got, got something jammed on that one. As far as defensive tackle, Hargrave was a terrible decision. I mean, if his, if this is the end and we never see Hargrave in a Niner uniform, that was a horrible decision. Now I liked it in real time, so I'm not second guessing it, but it's clear now that it was a horrible decision. They went for a guy who rushes the passer. They got rid of all of their run defenders, Jimmy Ward, Manuel Mosley, Aziz Al-Shair, Hassan Ridgeway. Uh, you know, they kissed off like five, Samson Ebukam. They kissed off like five good run defenders for this guy who doesn't play the run all that well, brought him in, and ha they haven't played the run 
particularly well since he's been here. And um, he hasn't had the impact as a, as a pass rusher he had in his two previous stops. So uh, I think that was a, that was not a necessarily a good move. It got hailed as a good move. And in theory, I love the idea of a pass rushing tackle, but granted it has not worked out. No, thank goodness though. They, they signed Jordan Elliott because without him right now, what would they do at defensive tackle? They'd be starting Kevin Givens, who is a backup defensive tackle. So at least the Niners, they should be okay. That's the thing. It's like J- Javon Hargrave goes down. Frankly, he hadn't been making much of an impact anyway. Is he better than Jordan Elliott at this point in their careers? I don't know. Maybe. And then Kalia Davis comes back. Maybe he'll give him something. But to me, like this is no excuse for the 49ers. It's an injury. That's not why your, def- your defense was struggling with Javon Hargrave. There is something much worse, uh, bigger going on with this defense. And I think you st- we got to look at Sorensen, Staley that combination like they're running this i mean it seems like they're running Sorensen's defense which is pete carroll's defense which is the most outdated i mean seattle doesn't even run that anymore why are the niners they're last in the league in blitz rate it's the most vanilla defense it doesn't make any sense it seems like they made a miscalculation with that one which is strange because kyle's usually good at picking coaches well i mean you know they They've made some bad personnel decisions on defense and then in the off season, and then they make bad, then they ca- they make those decisions worse by sticking with those guys um, at the cut down when all evidence says they shouldn't. Example, last year, Oliver, he got a roster spot. Deshaun Jameson did not. That, that was not smart. This year, they cut Jalen Graham. They gave a roster spot to Devondre Campbell. That was not a good decision. If you look at at Campbell's numbers, he's he looks terrible. Um, he's not, he can't cover anybody right now. He's just he's there right now. Devondre Campbell is a major major liability in coverage. So I, I don't I don't know what to say exactly about their situation, but it seems like there's been a couple situations. I mean, not having Dre Greenlaw. I mean, what a what a massive loss. I mean, that's why there was even a Dre Greenlaw question today. Uh, when's Dre coming back? Because they need him because they don't have anybody else. And his answer was like, I don't know. Not anytime soon. Right. One uh, thing real quick. For so we're talking we're about Sorensen as being a mistake. This is Kyle's guy. I mean, this is a player's guy. This is someone they wanted. They got they ran with Steve Wilkes out of town, even though his defense was third in the league in points allowed. Um, You know who he went after today? Who he threw under the bus today on the conference call? Who we named? Who we called out? The special teams coordinator. He said, you know what? Our special teams just weren't prepared. He said that. So that, I think that's interesting. Like, yeah, sure, they weren't. And maybe firing the special teams coordinator will show like you're holding, you know, t- holding someone responsible, taking accountability. But I don't think that's going to satisfy fans and the ownership. Like, we got Schneider out of here. It seems like special teams have been an issue for Kyle Shanahan since he's got here. He's never really had a good returner or good coverage units. It's something he doesn't take much interest in. And even said in the thing today, like, I just don't want him to mess it up. Right. Forget making plays. I just wanted to not mess it up. Like, well, if that's the attitude, they're going to mess it up. 